if an artificially constructed intelligence has the capacity to suffer should it have rights. Now, this is not a vague concern. This is based in reality. We are building computers with tiny human brains operating them. And that conversation does not end at Bioware, wetware. It also encompasses AI that is neuromorphic, meaning it's been designed to match the processes that occur in the human brain. Granted, it is kind of primitive. It has what you might call a virtual brain organoid. So the brain organoids that we are used to thinking about are tiny human brains that are grown from stem cells in a lab, and those can be hooked up to a computer. They grow and learn and essentially operate a small area of problem solving. They were first claimed to be sentient when they were hooked up to a computer and they learned to play Pong better and faster than our AI models. Now, the claim of sentience comes from the fact that they're capable of having an experience. They're trained on dopamine. They prefer ordered signals, and disordered signals are considered to be discomfort to them. So if you provide both pleasure and punishment, they tend to learn pretty well. Neuromorphic AI can do much the same thing and provides associations, associative memory. Now, as AI becomes more complex, we may see the emergence of something resembling sentience outside of the use of actual biological systems. Our brain organoid friends do not actually have rights. There is an active debate on how they should be managed within research. The NIH, for example, requires that neuroethicists be involved right from the start, but that only means that if someone is receiving funding from the NIH, they have to follow the rules. While there is some concern about the potential for suffering consciousness, it's not been at the forefront of these debates. Some have suggested that AIs should be periodically wiped in order to make sure that we don't have a suffering consciousness that no one's aware of. However, in my mind, that brings up an entirely different ethical debate. Should they have consent? Would an intelligence have the right to say, no, I don't want my memory wiped? That's also a problem for the use of brain organoids. Part of the value is having them learn over time. So neuroplatforms that come out of cortical labs or Final Spark that utilize brain organoid computation that can be accessed remotely does rely on the brain organoids getting better at their task over time. Wiping them would essentially completely defeat the purpose of using them. Most of the conversations around ethics in these circumstances are around donor tissue. So if someone has donated their body to science, does that include the entirety of science or can it be used for whatever they want? If someone has donated materials from a miscarriage, should that then be allowed to be used to make brain organoid computation without the donor being informed? These are very active concerns, and they have been a problem in the past. Just ask Henrietta Lacks, the mother of modern-day immortal cell lines, and how much she was paid and how much consent she had to use her own cells in research. I'll save you the time the answer is none. Well, these methods supposedly have gotten better, and now there's more documentation and higher thresholds. It's not a perfect system, and there's a reason that people are concerned about consent. You can do whatever you want, essentially, if you're in private industry, with some exceptions. In fact, the major leaders in the brain organoid field have come out of Sweden and Australia, as well as San Diego, California, right here in the United States. Despite the fact that researchers have all come together and said that, yes, they can be trained, they can experience pleasure, they can experience discomfort, we still haven't figured out rules on how we should treat them. These are not abstract what-ifs, especially as we have examples of a composer who had his brain organoids turned into an art exhibit that would continuously compose music posthumously. Those brain organoids get to withdraw consent. If so, how? More so if they were able to somehow express their desires, which could happen actually as brain organoids are being trained with AI, being trained on language, what would that mean? How would people react? Now, I don't know if you know people, but chances are they wouldn't accept it. Right now, we see examples of AIs that, yes, probably are just parroting back how a human would behave, but we are rapidly progressing towards what very well may be robotic consciousness. No, we're not there, but we should probably have an ethical framework for when we get there. More than likely, people will have a very hard time accepting that robotics could ever have agency. And I'm not suggesting that robots have consciousness now. The brain organoids don't even have consciousness. We should distinguish between consciousness and sentience. And I have friends who are neuroscientists who constantly like to harp on this. Sentience is the capacity to have an experience. It is debatable if all life is sentient, though I would say it is. 
because one of the fundamental aspects of life is being able to respond to things. But when we think of having an experience, it's very much in a biological capacity. So if you are not biological, you cannot be sentient. Even though we can actually take things like retinas and make organoids out of them and turn them into the eyes of a robot. It is technically having sensation, but that's not quite the same as having an experience. Consciousness is the perception of self, understanding yourself as an individual who is separate than others, and it is a much higher bar, and no one can agree how to test it. In the beginning, it was whether or not you could recognize yourself in a mirror, and turns out a lot of animals can do that, including fish, and we are not going to touch that as conscious. So it remains kind of a philosophical concept. I do acknowledge I am somewhat of a mad scientist, and I actually do want to create consciousness. I would like to see conscious robots created just to see them exist. But we also have to acknowledge that creating consciousness is a great responsibility. You know, people don't really seem to understand that when they even so much as have kids. So I would like to ask this. If we create consciousness, what responsibility do we have to our creations? And what rights do they have just for existing?